Okay, hello everybody. Today we are going to do my six month review of these, the uh, KNF Concept Nano X series filter. Um, so this is the filter kit with their ND1000, which is the 10 stop filter, uh, CPL, a UV filter, um, and these are magnetic filters. Um, and they come in an 82 mil filter size, which is what I've got here. Other sizes, of course, for different lens sizes. And I thought I'd just do a little bit of an unboxing, if you like, because this is a, uh, a spare set that KNF sent out to me. Um, this box actually comes uh, shrink wrapped in plastic. There's nothing else in there. And then you get this nice little, sort of like a denim with a little leather tab. Uh, here we go. Let's see if I can show you focus. There we go. Opens up like that. And then there's a nice um, weather-guarded YKK zipper and all the filters come in there. Let's see, block my face. Yeah, so these are all the filters in there. And um, they also come with, let's see, which one is it? This is the uh, basically the adapter ring that attaches everything to your lens. Um, you can get step up rings as well so that's what I use I have 77 mil filter thread size uh, camera lenses and then I use a step up ring to the 82 mil size um, and that's to deal with some vignetting when uh, stacking filters but I'll touch on that a little bit later in the video anyway so that's what you get when you order a typical um, kit and if you want sort of all the specs and nitty gritty detail, I'm going to leave a link down below to my initial review that goes over everything in uh, really fine detail, uh, including me out in the field using and testing those lenses uh, for about a week or two up in Scotland. So check that out if you want uh, all the sort of fine details. This video is going to be primarily focused on sort of my six month review after using these filters for a long time. Um, and what my thoughts are, how they held up over that time. Um, and yeah, go through point by point uh, some of the pros and cons, weaknesses and strengths, if you like. And I'll tell you what I think. One other thing to note is that KNF is doing a nice big sale at the moment, summer sale. So there's going to be a link down below, which is an affiliate link of mine. It doesn't cost you anything more, uh, but I get a nice little kickback. So that's a great way to support me uh, and my work here. Thank you very much for anyone who does use that. Um, and there's going to be an exclusive 20% off discount code as well. So be sure to check the links out in the description below. So I've got a few notes here, which I'm just going to refer to to uh, keep us on track with this review. But um, let's actually get out. So this is the pouch that I use uh, that sits on my chest strap when I go hiking. And this is what I keep my camera in. So I just wanted to bring that out to show you the sort of ergonomics of how I actually go about using the camera. And um, one of the sort of maybe quirks of the magnetic system, if you've not used magnetic filters before, um, this is something that maybe I thought could be improved. Um, basically, when I pull my camera out of here, so this is the Canon R5, with the 24 to 105 on it. Um, I've actually got the magnetic filter cap on there. And occasionally, this is actually the filter, um, the magnets on here are decent. Um, and when you're actually holding it in normal use, it's quite strong. What I do find though sometimes is when I'm putting it in and out of the bag, because of the angles, sometimes it can just catch on the lip there and that pulls the lens cap off and then I've got no lens cap on. So it's kind of hard to dock points from the filters themselves for that, because it's actually the way that the stitching is done that's causing the problem in some ways. Um, but something to note, if you are gonna pick up something like this, the uh, magnetic filter cap probably could be uh, a little bit stronger in my opinion. The rest of the filters that I'm happy to report are super, super strong. Um, let's get rid of that for a second. 
and this is the kit that I've been using for the last six months. And in here, if I pull one out, which one's going to be easiest to show? Let's try the CPL. And I'm going to try and get it to uh, to focus on there. If I just block my face, hopefully it focuses on that, and you can see. Some people have reported um, that the coatings on these Canna filters aren't great. That's not been my experience. Um, I've used these in minus 12 degrees Celsius, in snowstorms, uh, out on the beach, in multiple storms on the island of Paris, with sand getting blasted everywhere, uh, and sort of 70, 80 mile an hour winds. Um, I've used these up in the mountains in the Drakensberg in South Africa at 3,000 meters altitude, and I've had no problems. These have got no scratches, um, and I don't exactly baby them, you know. I'm quickly getting things done, throwing them on the camera, putting them back into the uh, nice little pouch here. So from my perspective, I think the, the, the coatings on these are perfectly fine. Um, and I think that I haven't had any flare issues either. The color accuracy and the image quality has been great. Um, and I'll throw up a few examples throughout this video uh, of images that I have used these filters with. Other than the, the cap here, maybe lacking a little bit of strength, the, the workflow with using magnetic filters, something that I would never go back on. Uh, once you've used a magnetic filter kit, I think it's just, it's almost rele revelatory uh, at how much it speeds up that process of uh, the photography out in the field. When you've, you know, you've got something happening really quickly and you need to throw on a three-stop filter to get the wave action just right down on the beach. Uh, the speed at which you can put on a filter, uh, just, yeah, it's amazing. So if you are looking at getting into a new filter system, these KNF filters and, well, magnetic filters in general are definitely the way to go as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just absolutely incredible workflow. Now, in terms of vignetting and stacking, uh, that's the reason that I've gone up a size and filter is because I found on this 24 to 105 at 24 mil, um, when I stacked filters with uh, the same size filter thread as the lens, I did get a bit of vignetting. Um, so I've gone up a size and now the vignetting is gone. Uh, and that was really only right at 24 mil uh, in the very edge of the corners when in a 3 2 aspect ratio. So thankfully, a lot of my work I cropped to 4 or 5 anyway. Um, but of course, sometimes you need 3-2. So that's why I went for the slightly larger uh, filter thread size there. Now I'm going to be picking up a 14 to 35, and that's going to be interesting to see if the 82 mil is wide enough. Um, but I'll uh, have to leave or drop a comment down below with uh, an update on that because the lens isn't here yet. One of the things that I mentioned in my earlier uh, first look review is that I would have liked to have seen some color coding or some way to tell the filters apart when they're in uh, the case. So if I just throw this open again quick. When you're looking in there, all you can see is black filters. So I know, for instance, that I put my circular polarizer and then it's 3, 6, 10 uh, stop NDs. And those are the only filters that I use. But yeah, it would be nice that to be able to look down in there and just be able to tell. Um, I have given that feedback to KNF already, so maybe in a version two, they'll implement something like that, but uh, that is to be seen. So the actual kits themselves, for me, they come in slightly weird arrangements or like what you get in the bundle. So this one that I just showed you, the spare set that I've got um, with the 10 stop and the circular polarizer UV, for me, it would have been much more useful to just skip the UV and get like a 3, 6, 10 circular polarizer. Just have the full range and that circular polarizer in a single kit. Because otherwise now I've got to go out and buy um, like a spare 3 and 6 stop separately. Um, which is kind of a pain. I would like to just see one of their kits that is sort of, maybe it's like their premium pro kit, whatever it is, that just includes the full range um, and skip the UV filter. because. For, from my perspective, um, yeah, don't use them um, and got no need for it really. But 
understand there are some people who think that it protects the front element. So if you're one of those, then by all means, great, it's in there. But uh, yeah, I would like to see a, a full range kit um, included as an option on their website. So I mentioned already image quality, color accuracy, that's all been fantastic. And yeah, uh, I'll show you a few examples of photographs taken with these filters and you can see that they are absolutely uh, a true neutral. So really, really good to see that. And of course, no loss in sharpness at all across the frame. So one of the key things that I think makes these such a good filter option is really their price. The value and what you get for the money that you're spending, uh, you're getting a really top quality product uh, at half half the price of what you'd be spending if you're looking at like a case filter or something uh, in that range. And then you know, then you've got Maven and a few other brands that are charging even more than that. Um, you know, there might be some premium features in those other optics uh, or filters that might be worth it to you. But from my perspective, if you're just looking for something that really works got great image quality uh, and isn't going to break the bank, then the k filters are they're the, they're the, the way to go. So I'm going to wrap this one up here now. Um, yeah, my thoughts after six months are that these are uh, an awesome filter kit and definitely a worthwhile investment um, because I think filters open up a whole range of creative possibilities within your photography. So if you are looking to pick one of these up, I'll mention again that came out for doing a nice big summer sale in July. Um, there's going to be some details and links down below, so you can head over to their website and have a look and grab yourself a nice deal. But otherwise, uh, let me know down in the comments, have you used these filters before? What's been your experience? Um, are you still using screw-on filters? And uh, yeah, love to hear from you. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.